Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a hardware review, sort of, on the Nyko Power Station for the Xbox One. That would be this thing right here. Now, basically what this is, is a little add-on you put onto the, fr uh, the front side of the Xbox One, you know, through that USB port. Uh, and you put it in there, and it basically is a charging station for two battery packs uh, for the Xbox One controller. Now, herp derp, the Xbox One controller needs batteries to work. Uh, you can use simple, like, uh, AA batteries, or Microsoft actually has this thing called the Plug and Charge Kit, where you buy that, and it's a rechargeable battery pack, and it gets plugged in through a USB cord, and that's how it recharges. That's the idea. This is the same thing, except it's a docking station where it uh, can charge two batteries at any uh, given time, and then you can take those out and plug it into your controller. Um, but, of course, it's got the immediate bonus of being aesthetically pleasing. It looks like it's an add-on to the console, because it basically is. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Nyko makes a lot of stuff like that, um, but the truth is, I think a lot of their stuff is neat conceptually, but it's ultimately kind of pointless, uh, and not necessarily always the best product. So I, I don't typically buy much of their stuff. But, in this case, um, a lot of people were saying this was pretty good, that the batteries were actually better than Microsoft batteries in the sense that they lasted longer and they charged faster. So we will see if that is true. Um, yeah, so that, that was kind of what caught my eye to it. So I did a little more research on it, and uh, it retails for about $30 US, sometimes up to $40, depending on where you go. I found this at a Toys R Us in uh, Canada uh, during my trip up there. Uh, for $30 Canadian. So with the exchange rate into USD, that's only about 20 bucks. So I thought, okay, I'm probably not going to get a better deal than that. I will, you know, pick it up and I'll basically make a video for you guys. Uh, plus, I use a, uh, a plug and charge kit for the Xbox One, so if I could replace that with this, that would actually be kind of nice. Um, so yeah, that's basically why I got it. So this thing had clearly been sitting in that Toys R Us for a long time though, because there's dust all over the box. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to open it up now and uh, we'll start taking a look at it. So it's got this little flap here on the side and then it's got some um, tape here and over here. There we go. Lift that up. And inside we have the device. We have the manual, which we probably won't need. But uh, we'll take it out here. And uh, that's the batteries, I assume. There is the device itself. Now, as you can see, it's uh, aesthetically pleasing. I think it wins immediate bonus points on that. You, like I said, you just kind of plug it into the side. It's meant to look like it's a, a, an add-on to the console once it's in there, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But uh, it has this button here that allows it to pop up like that, and then there's two slots in there for batteries, which are contained in here. Uh, and yeah, you take those out. And, yeah, two battery packs, which is cool. And then you just plug them in there, you know, I guess like that, or the other way around. Oh, I'm not even looking at it, but you, you get the idea. I'll figure that out in a bit. But, uh, yeah, that's cool. It's got a lock in the back, so once you plug it into place, you just push this lock, and it, you know, clenches it in there so that it, uh, it's more firm. It has ventilation through the side so that the, uh, the, the system's airflow out can continue to work, which is cool. Uh, it's very, very nice uh, aesthetically, so we will see if it lives up to that, though. Uh, one obvious negative to this thing, without even having used it, is that it requires that USB port permanently. Like, that becomes your dedicated USB port. So you still have the two on the back, and you'll have to do any other USB things through there, which is a little bit of an annoyance, but it is what it is. The other thing, of course, is that if they ever update the Xbox One to like a slim model, it's very unlikely that this thing will work on there just because it won't fit the shape anymore. I mean, yeah, you could use like a USB extension cord and connect it. It's not like it wouldn't still function as a charging station. It would just lose the uh, aesthetic appeal. But uh, yeah, that's the idea. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go set it up and I'm going to start charging these batteries. And uh, over the course of about, a, I think, like a week, I'm going to use them and see how they are. And then I'll get back to you. So it's been about a week and it's time for final thoughts on this thing. Uh, there's some positives and there's some negatives. So let's start with the positives. First, I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. Obviously, that's open to interpretation, but I like it because I like the way it looks like a logical extension of the console. It really just kind of fits right in. Uh, of course, it supports two batteries at the same time, so if you're only playing with one controller, it's 
you'll never really run out of power as long as you just kind of keep uh, swapping them out. When you're not actually charging them, you can rotate them over and pop them in like that, and that way they aren't perpetually in uh, draining energy. Um, one cool thing about it is that it will work when the console is, in, is uh, in instant on mode. Um, so for example, you don't actually have to have the console on and running and seeing the dashboard for this thing to work. If you have it in that same mode where uh, it'll download updates and uh, go immediately to the dashboard as opposed to completely turning it off, you know what I'm talking about? If that's the case, this will charge, which is nice. Um, now, the batteries themselves uh, actually have a pretty long lifespan. Uh, I, I never had any issues with the controller ever dying on me or anything like that. Uh, and I used it for quite a while, so I was, I was pretty happy with uh, that turnout. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of where the positives end. Um, the rest of it is... Okay. <laughs> At this point, uh, I want to talk about some of the negatives. And the first negative, again, has to do with the design. While it may look nice, structurally, it's not exactly sound. Um, the only thing that's really holding it there is the USB port itself as well as this little plastic clip on the back, which I believe I showed you guys already. Now that stabilizes it a little bit, but really it's, it's not held on there all that well. Um, it would certainly be very unwise to like turn it up on the side because very likely the thing would just fall off. Uh, if you're going to grab the console, you're still going to want to put your, the weight underneath the console itself, not under this thing because it's very likely it'll pop off. At least that's how it seemed to be for me. Uh, now that's not that big of a deal because most people don't move their consoles around a lot. As long as you keep the console stable, it's whatever. Uh, so, but that is certainly worth noting uh, because obviously the Xbox One wasn't designed to have any kind of add-ons for it. Uh, so it makes sense that it wouldn't really have a good place to kind of clasp into. Uh, but uh, some other negatives here. The this one might just be unique to me or something. I don't know how to even explain this one, but. It collects a lot of dust. And, okay, so if you have an Xbox One, you already probably know this. The matte finish part right here tends to just be a dust magnet, regardless of how much you use it. It doesn't, it's not a, I'm not saying like, oh, I never played the Xbox One, it's a dust magnet. No, I'm saying even if you use it a lot, in fact, generally when you use it a lot, this happens even more, you get a lot of dust all over it. That's normal. This looks like the same material, so I assumed it would logically follow that the same amount of dust would be there. But I don't even know how to explain this. It like collects its own set of dust and then never goes past like this plastic border. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Take a look at this. You see that? See the way that looks? I can't explain that. <laughs> um, and it's it, you might be thinking, oh, dude, gross. Don't you like clean your house? What was up with that? Yeah, man, the footage you're seeing, I cleaned that whole thing like an hour and a half before it started to look like that. That just happens, and I don't know why. If I had to guess, I'd say it's because the vent in there is pushing dust out this way, it's pushing air out, and it of course comes through this thing. I'm thinking that it must kick itself back up and land here, but I just, I don't understand how it could be so definitive on that border. Somebody out there might have an explanation for that, but it's not me, so I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Now, it only really did that when the console was on. When the console was off, it didn't do that. So that suggests that it has something to do with the ventilation, but I don't, I don't, I don't entirely know. Uh, so, okay, another negative has to do with the charging. This is kind of the, the big final point here. When you, this is a neat feature, and, but at the same time, almost perhaps useless because mine didn't seem to work properly. When you plug the console in uh, or have it in instant on mode, whatever, point is when it's charging, there will be two little lights that pop up in the center on, on this thing, which is really cool because then you can see that it is in fact charging. Uh, and as it charges, uh, there will be additional indicators to state, oh, it's at 25%, and then it'll fill up to 50%, and then over to 75%, and ultimately to 100%. Uh, and then you know you're good to go. So what I decided to do is, in that after that first clip you guys saw at the beginning of this video, I went ahead and set this thing up and I decided to time how long it would take to fully charge the battery. Which, side note, when you get new batteries you should always fully charge them, uh, that way you ensure that they have a longer lifespan. If you just charge it for like 10-20 minutes just to use it real quick and then say, okay, I'll charge the rest when I go to bed, the battery ultimately won't live nearly as long, just FYI. So I was like, okay, I'll set it up and I'll time to see how long that takes. So I set it up at 6 p.m. Uh, that day. And I've assumed that it would be done by the time I was ready to go to bed, perhaps even earlier. Uh, so the whole evening goes by and I go to check on it and it hasn't done anything. It hasn't even reached 25% yet. 
And I was like, what the hell? So, uh, okay, whatever. I was about ready to go to bed, and then finally it reached 25%. I was like, okay, so it is working. That's good. Um, now, I'm a night owl, so I go to bed at like 3 a.m. It's not like I'm going to bed four hours after I started. It's, you know, it's going to bed like nine hours after I started charging it. Um, so, okay, it took a long time, but I was like, all right, whatever. And then I wake up in the morning, and I'm thinking, okay, now it's going to be done. It's at 50%. Uh, and then I was like, okay, I just keep leaving it in there. Get all the way to 6 p.m., and uh, again, so it's been a full day, and it still hadn't reached 75%. And then finally, it's getting close to about the time I was going to go to bed, and it reaches 75%. I'm thinking, Jesus, okay, all right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, whatever, I'm going to go to bed. And then I wake up thinking, okay, now it'll be at 100. Nope. I get all the way to, again, 6 p.m. So at this point, we're two days in of just charging, and it still hadn't reached 100%. Uh, and I waited a few more hours, uh, probably around like 10 p.m. That, that night. I was just like, this thing is clearly not going to get to 100%. It's just... It's not going to do it uh, for whatever reason because neither battery would. So I decided, okay, I'll take it out uh, and I'll check it in the console. Now, of course, if, if you're not aware, you can when you have a, a battery in your con in the controller and the Xbox One, it'll show you the percentage of how charged it is. I mean, it, visually, it won't give you an actual number, but it looked like it was at 75%. So it looked like it got to that point and just stopped. Why that is, I don't know. But uh, I thought, okay, well. Here's what I can do. The, you can charge it in the you can charge those batteries in the controller with just the USB cable. So I was doing that, and I thought, okay, great. This will this will solve it, per, perhaps. At least I'll narrow down what the problem is. Nope, it never ever went up. It just stayed at 75%. So my point here is that the things don't seem to actually get beyond 75%, and I don't understand that because I've seen other people's videos and other people's reviews that didn't have this issue. This might just be unique to me, but I'm just telling you what I found which was that I couldn't get them to go past 75%. That said, they lasted a really long time. Like a really long time. I did not have any issues with these things ever running out of power. So, win some, lose some. So ultimately my final thoughts on this thing are, don't pay the 30 bucks that they're asking for it. It's simply not worth it. I pay the equivalent of about $20 US because of the exchange rate, and I kind of regret it. If I had paid $10, I'd have been much happier. Uh, this thing is really just an alternative to Microsoft's like official battery pack, uh, and that, that's really all it is. It's just an alternative. It's it's not it's not the better one. Uh, it has some better features, yes, but ultimately it doesn't perform as well, in my opinion. Uh, it does beat getting standard like AA batteries, though. So I would say for ten bucks, sure, go for it. Twenty bucks, maybe if you're only already using Duracells, this would be an upgrade. But if you already have the official charge pack, don't bother with this. You don't need it. So uh, there you go, guys. I uh, hope that helps anybody who is interested in this thing. Uh, if not, thanks for watching anyway. Uh, so there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.